it all started on the same day. It started on the day that Menendez landed. We know this. It's documented. The Spanish kept great records, which were of such great assistance to me when I was doing research. When he landed, he had, of course, the 900 soldiers and sailors. He had had a, a master brewer who immediately started, as soon as they tasted the water from the Fountain of Youth, which was the artesian well there, they immediately started brewing alcohol, and we haven't stopped since. But he had a professional to take care of that. Gambling, they had gambling equipment. They still are finding gambling equipment out of the Fountain of Youth, the landing spot. They are still finding it. Cards and dice and games, and I'm surprised they haven't found a full pool table out there because we were the, we had the first pool tables in the New World. Oh yes, absolutely. We started importing pool tables very early in the colony. It was considered a major piece, a, 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 almost an essential piece of furniture in a Spanish home. And of course, we've never outgrown our uh, love of pool tables here in St. Augustine. But we, we got them very early. Uh, so we know he had gambling. And thanks to that wonderful record keeping, we know he also brought prostitutes with him. It makes sense. He has 900 soldiers and sailors. He has 26 craftsmen who were allowed to bring their wives, the craftsmen. So we have 26 married women, 900 soldiers and sailors. So it makes sense that he brings a group of professional women with him. Now, the professional women and the wives were listed in his shipping manifest as the unimportant cargo. <laughs> of course they were. The unimportant cargo. In the event of the storm, they would go overboard before the chickens, the pigs, the casts of nails, and of course the lumber that they were all going to need as essential in the colony. Women, we can always get more of those. So they were the unimportant cargo. And, and I found that interesting because that seems to be a carrying theme through St. Augustine's history. Uh, one of the things that I talk about in detail in the book are both the laws that applied to women and the status that women had. You know, I, a lot of people ask me, why did we have so much prostitution in St. Augustine? And the answer simply is, well, how do you expect women to survive if they are completely and totally dependent on men? The laws said that, and that we're talking like up until the 1930s, 40s, when women, women were able to get educated uh, and, and, and hold down jobs, because it was also illegal for them to hold jobs, you know, like actual paying jobs. Uh, for, so we have almost 400 years of history where women are bound to their nearest male relative. Their husband, their father, their brother, their son, their uncle, their 12th cousin twice removed. If it was male and it was the next day, it was her closest relative, they controlled any money, any inheritance you might have. They controlled your property if you had any. They controlled uh, your standard of living. You know, you can have this much to live on, but not this much, even though you are, uh, in, in, on paper, a wealthy woman. They had the full right to say how you were going to live. Now, what about those women who, whose husbands or fathers or brothers or whatever were dead? And this is a high mortality city. We have, in addition to the usual yellow fever problems, it's a military town. It's a fishing town, both very high mortality for men. So you have a situation where you have women who are widowed, and they don't have family here in town to take care of them and the five kids that they've had because they can, they're Catholic. So what are they going to do? What do you do when you have a society where there is no social underpinning, so no, no social network to help hold you up in times like this? 
you starve. You did. You and your children starved. Women couldn't hold jobs, remember? Not legally. A, a lower class woman could be a cook or a maid or a laundress. Uh, and I think there was one, a farmer. But if you were not a, a lower class, you were middle class, if you were the wife of a soldier, for example, you could be a midwife or you could be a fine sewer. That's it. Those were the only legal ways you could make a living. Not enough to support you and those children. Pension systems? We don't have those. We don't have, we have the occasional church group, but other than that, you're pretty much stuck. So, at least in St. Augustine, many of those women turned to a surefire way that you could not only support yourself and your children, you could make enough money to live, but you could also make money to better yourself. It was a high profit profession. You could make money, own land. So you see, women who were by themselves and widowed could own land and manage money. Married women, single non-married women, divorced women, nope, they can't manage the money. Not allowed to. Only a male relative can do it. But if you're a widow under Spanish law, you can manage your money and own property. Needless to say, every prostitute and every brothel manager in St. Augustine was a widow, whether she was living with her husband or not. She was a widow. And one of the key words that you look for in the census records in St. Augustine is to see who is making their living as a fine sower. As many of our ladies did become fine sewers, which became a code word for doing something else that was in fact making you more money. <laughs> because fine sewing just doesn't cut it. Many of those mansions that are on the uh, on the bayfront, well, in the, the original Spanish mansions that were there, many of them in the census records indicated that they were owned by fine sewers. Living, fine sewers, living by themselves. You know, no men around, but they were fine sewers. Widows. Widows. And also widows, yes, also widows, because all of them were widows. <laughs> Every one of them. That's one of the key ways you can find out these things. And by the way, a brothel in St. Augustine was a ladies' boarding house. Mm -hmm. Look in the census records, look on the maps, and you see the uh, ladies' boarding houses, of which we had many. Anyway.